Last year, the Green Bay Packers were the youngest team in the league looking to shock the world. And they, they kind of did. As much as any team that gets that kind of media fully. Like before their first game, their new quarterback was anointed as the next great QB in an unbroken line since the magic of Don Majikowski in the early 90s. And like a few games in, statistically, it kind of looked like that was accurate, but there were some obvious issues. Because then a funny thing happened, and he fell off a cliff for a few games. Teams got tape, saw that he was forcing balls with low trajectories into windows that just were not there, and they started knocking balls down or picking them off. With any young QB, eventually the league figures out how to stop their initial sources of success. This is just a thing you see with every quarterback in the entire league forever. And sometimes it doesn't last very long, sometimes they never recover from it. That's what makes or breaks a kid. Whether or not he and his coaching staff can figure out a second and then third way for that quarterback to be successful. If it's all fastballs all the time, the league has an answer for that. It has many answers for that in many different schemes. This is not a problem for most of the NFL. And sadly for us, they did. By the end of the year, they were a version of what the Lions had been the previous season. The young team nobody was going to want to face if they got into the tournament. The difference was that in their case, the, the Packers did get in. Whereas the Lions lost the tiebreaker at the end of the season previous year, uh, the Packers got in. They made it to the dance. They won a playoff game and all was right in the world. Well, at least all was right in Green Bay. So this offseason, they didn't have a lot of work to do, right? Well, not exactly. Like the, the Packers defense last year was in certain respects, I'm just going to say awful. Defensive coordinator Joe Barry, the defensive coordinator of the 2008 Lions, I'm not sure how he ever recovered from that particular gig. Heck of a linebackers coach. Uh, but I think we could say that that is the ceiling for Mr. Barry in the NFL, or it should be. On uh, his new hire, Matt LaFleur, went an unconventional route to get that replacement for Joe Barry, who was fired at the end of the season. He tapped Boston College head coach Jeff Halfley, and he's been in the NFL before, like he coached the secondary in San Francisco, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, 2013 to 2018 before he went to the college ranks. So it's not like he has no experience in the league. I'm not trying to imply that. Barry's muck up the middle defensive line is, is going to be kind of replaced with an attack-based mindset, and that can do nothing but good for players like Kenny Clark, Rayshon Gary, Preston Smith, and Lucas Van Ness. Those guys are all going to benefit from a more aggressive style of play. They're also likely simplifying the job for their linebackers, which can't be anything but good for the athletically gifted but mentally questionable linebacker core that the Green Bay Packers have put together. Like, the less you're making someone like Quay Walker think about bluntly anything, the better everyone is going to feel about the end result that you get. And I mean, same goes for the corners. Uh, from an outside corner perspective, the, the difference between like a cover three and man is, is not a whole heck of a lot in terms of functional most of the time, like J.R. Alexander and Eric Stokes are going to be fine in this scheme. It, it seems like it's it's likely to be playing to their strengths as opposed to forcing them to succeed, kind of in spite of how the defense is designed. And you guys know I'm a huge proponent of that. There's a reason that every preseason, the national pundits have looked at this roster and thought that it couldn't help but succeed on the defensive side of the ball. We don't know if bringing in a head coach from the college level who wasn't able to deal with not being able to motivate players in the NIL, name and license world, 
we don't know if he's going to be the solution for motivating professionals who are inherently less coach motivated. Uh, but hey, dumber things have worked in the past. So the defense should be better for the Packers this year. But what about the offensive side of the ball? Well, they replaced their backfield. Uh, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are not really factors on the team this year as Jones is gone and Dillon went on a season-ending IR. So that leaves Josh Jacobs and Marshawn Lloyd, which is still two really good players for the Packers defensive back or offensive backfields are. That That's probably an upgrade overall from what they got last season. Like Dylan seemed like he was cooked last year and Jones was injured or hurt the entire season. So it can't really be much worse in terms of their running back performance, barring the two players I mentioned going down with season ending injuries really early that, that they don't have a lot after that. The receivers, they're all a year older, which means that they've all got three or fewer seasons instead of two or fewer seasons. But every year, the receivers in the league, they get a little more experience. They get a little more savvy. Frankly, they get a little bit better. And the Packers have a ludicrously talented receiver core. Like Christian Watson is likely the best guy they have, but the soft tissue in his legs seems to be falling apart at a very young age. Uh, Romeo Dobbs. Love that guy. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the thing I hate most about the Packers is they keep, keep taking guys that I, I kind of had draft crushes on. Uh, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks. Like you just, you liked what they were doing with their receiver core. You were just kind of wondering how quickly it was going to be able to actually turn into something useful with all of these young players. And the answer was that it did last year. Like when you look at any kind of metrics sort of behind the scenes on these guys, uh, you, you don't know which one to take in fantasy football because they're all theoretically pretty decent options. Like sometime soon, we're probably going to be calling this the best receiver group the Packers have ever had. And I, I do have the full understanding of the history of this team when I say that. Not being pedantic. These guys are all very good. And there are a lot of them. Like, I include the tight ends in that. Like, Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft are rolling into year two with arrows that appeared to be sharply pointed up coming out of their first seasons. So that's six deep in terms of receivers. And I've always been a guy who believed you wanted a lot of very good receivers more than you would want one amazing one and then a massive drop-off. If the defense doesn't know what you're going to do, that's always better. Like obviously, if you could, if one of these guys pops out and is the next great wide receiver one, along with the rest of these guys, that's better for them. But even if that doesn't happen, you know, if none of them are a consistent, spectacular fantasy option and a different head pops up every week, that means that this system is working as intended from the Packers. But the offensive line is potentially a problem for them. Uh, like their left left tackle is a former seventh rounder, and. Given that draft pedigree, he has turned out about as well as you could possibly expect replacing David Bakhtiari, but he's not that kind of elite left tackle that you would love to have. Like, they can get by with him. He's fine. Zach Tom at right tackle was also fine. But that's kind of what you get. Like, I like Jordan Morgan before the draft, and the fact that he is a Green Bay Packer has not changed my take on his relative ability to play football. <laughs> Uh, sadly, but much like Lucas Van Ness, I was still a huge fan of the guy, even if I hate the team. So, I mean, the Packers have some things to overcome, but they're the same things that they overcame last year. Young receivers, talented, but slightly less than last year. Unproven team, you know, straight to the QB, like Jordan Love. Say what you want. Most quarterbacks drafted in the first round will never have a single season as good as his year was last year with a sketchy offensive line and no wide receiver who had more than two seasons in the NFL, the vast majority having only one. It was not some ideal situation that he was dropped into that made it super easy for him to be successful. He did have to work miracles. And sadly, a lot of the time he did. 
So you add that to a defense, we really have no idea where we're going to get something from, but there are all the indications that we should expect a better defense than they had last year. And I have the Packers winning 10 games, finishing second in the division, not needing tiebreakers to get a wildcard berth. Were you expecting me to just like dump on them? That really means you just don't know me very well.